What's going on, beautiful people? It's your boy, c Up, a.k.a. Critwick, coming at you guys with another commentating video. This is late, as you all know, coming from Ontario, end of season criterium. This is the category four or five race. And as you see off the gun, Steven Walter is pretty much second wheel and we are underway. The gentleman to my one o'clock in the red kit, that is Austin Croyer, whom I had uh, mentioned before in the uh, Ontario end of season vlogger video, as well as in the category four commentated video um, that has gone live just before this one. Um, again, thank you for your time. Thank you for clicking this video. Um, and again, this video is roughly over 28 minutes long. These races here at Ontario, um, the category four and four or five race were approximately about 30 minutes long. So right now I'm just sitting in on Austin's wheel and I will be sitting on his wheel for a little bit of time. And the reason why is because I kind of marked him um, from our last race. I saw that he had a pretty good finish uh, with the sprint. And so I stayed near him um, at the beginning of the race just to see if he would go or be making any moves. Um, I just wanted to be present if that was to go down. Again, I thank you for your time. I thank you for clicking this video. And if you are previewing uh, this commentary as your first one of many, um, I thank you and I ask that you would subscribe. We have recently just surpassed 800 subscribers. We are currently at about 807 and uh, we're on our way. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, I ask that you would do so. Um, you can hover over my logo in the bottom right of the video and uh, you will see the option for you to hit that red subscribe button. Additionally, I ask that if you like this commentated video, um, one in, it, in its completion, I ask that you would smash that thumbs up button it, that helps me out with the analytics with YouTube um, as well as it just motivates me to keep presenting you all commentated videos for the different races that I am doing this year and in the year to come um, so right now we are we've completed one lap and we are going through turn number one and I'm still sitting on Austin's wheel and to call some attention to the rear camera so we see here the peloton is on me they're right behind me I'm sitting near the front um, and so we have a few hitters behind me we have Dylan back there with the uh, bright uh, neon yellow or green trek bike he's a couple bodies behind me and you will see that he will be on my wheel here pretty soon and dylan met my family and my family and his family kind of met each other at the race which was really awesome and uh, dylan is the one who is actually a part of the thumbnail for this video and um, yeah so it's awesome coming out to races and meeting new people uh, meeting subscribers uh, and again building a community and that's what it's all about impacting communities and reshaping lives. Right here to my left, number 850, that's Max. Um, and he's also a strong rider. I've seen him a few times at different races, whether being CBR or here at Ontario. So right now you see we're going about 25 miles an hour and this section of the course is a headwind section. Um, and we're going, my heart rate's at 174 with about an eight, you know, about an 80, uh, four average uh, RPM currently at that moment. So now we've come through turn four and five and we are making our way to the start finish to finish, um, I believe, lap number two. I hope you all are doing okay today. Um, and thank you for again clicking this video. And again, I apologize for these videos coming super late. It's been like two weeks since this race. But uh, again, thank you for checking this thing out. Hopefully you're on an indoor trainer or you're on a stationary bike of some sort. And this is what you are utilizing to assist you in your training. Some people have even shared with me that seeing these racing commentated videos gives them some anxiety how close we get and uh you know it, it kind of comes with the territory getting real close and a little bit of bumping happens here and there and getting real tight in some of these turns um i totally understand but you know we we press to to ride another day so right now i'm sitting behind steven and this to my immediate right about one o'clock right now is uh josh with the simple green kit on and uh all is well again going about 70 82 revolutions per minute 25 26 miles an hour my heart rate's a little bit elevated because it was getting hotter in the day i believe it got up to the like 102 degrees um 
at Ontario, which is not the hottest that I've actually raced in, but it still was bacon. This race happened, I believe it was like 12 or 11.45, 12 o'clock-ish. So, of course, the sun is high noon and uh, not much shade protecting us from the rays from the sun but you know we tried to stay hydrated um tried to stay cool when we could so that once we got you know in the race we were able to have uh enough um energy to be able to go with some of these moves so right now you see me sitting behind mike star of flx racing so i'm on his wheel and this is a downhill portion right here you see this negative one percent grade as we come to turn number one and cool thing about this my family is sitting right there to the left of turn number one which was awesome because as i would come through that turn i would hear my son my daughter even my wife rooting for me um, as they would see where i was located because in this race i believe i had on a jl velo uh, orange, blue, and purple jersey with my Union Sport uh, blue, black, and white bibs, as you guys may have seen in some of the other um, videos and or thumbnails. But right now, just sitting on Mike Starr's wheel and uh, staying close to him. You see there's a little gap behind me. You see there's a gap between me and Dylan. Um, and I realized that Dylan had marked me as well in this race. Um, and what I mean by mark pretty much states that the person identifies that you are a wise or strong rider. And so what they do is they pretty much try to stay on your wheel throughout the time of a race or an event or anything of that nature, even a group ride. You know, you can have people marking other people just to see if they can hang with that said rider. So I've identified people that I mark, like for instance, Stephen Walter just in front of me with the uh, red and blue kit. I know he's a very strong rider. And so I know as I mark people, people mark me and it comes with the territory. So right now we're going through turn number four. As you see to the top right of the view of the screen, we have the map overlay of the course. To the, le to the bottom left, you have some, uh, some matrix information there, cadence, speed, heart rate, grade, and power, as well as you have footage from the rear camera. And if you all have any questions for me concerning racing, um, catting up, uh, what it's like, the time, and what do I do for training, uh, what kind of, you know, what equipment I have on my bike, please leave those comments, those questions down below in the comment section. So right now, being, you know, as I call myself a Clydesdale rider, one of those guys that weigh over 200 plus pounds, um, what I'm trying to do now is stay close to the front, but at the same time, stay tucked in. So you see here, I got guys on my left and guys on my right. So I'm trying to stay in the inside, stay in the middle, but stay close to the uh, inside because of course the inside or the guys on my left, which are called inside, the guys on my left are taking the shortest line through the course. So I'm trying to stay either to the left or stay in the middle so that I'm protected from as much wind as possible. And again, as you, if you look at the uh, map at the top right, you see we're in between turns number two and turn number three with a crosswind from the left to the right. And once we make this left-hand turn up here, um, we will be going in pretty much a headwind. And if some people may not know what that is, but that's a headwind is when the wind is blowing at you, a tailwind um, towards your head or you're going in the wind. Um, and a tailwind would be when the wind is actually pushing you the same direction that you're going. So right now you see I'm just on the inside, again, trying to tuck back in because we're in this headwind section. The speed has gone down to 22 miles an hour. Um, and you see it's slowing, the pace of the Peloton has slowed down. And so right now just trying to take, stay tucked in as we come through turns number four and as we progress to turn number five and then the start finish. So again, sitting on Austin's wheel and just keeping my head on a swivel, seeing what's going on, what's happening. You see Peter Verth there behind me, you see Dylan behind me as I'm sitting on Austin's wheel and we're making our way to the start finish again this section is about a negative one percent going down to the start finish so of course it makes for a very fast finish as we're coming around turn number five so it's very wise to be up near the front as you come around turn number four and five uh, because as you see up there at the top right that it's a very short um, segment of the course so pretty much where you are with turn number four you will be in a good or decent position in turn number five. And then of course, because it's downhill with a little kick to the right, you really have to be in good position. Um, and so that's something that I'm, I'm working on. That's something that I'm, I'm trying to uh, build up and encourage within myself is to 
be confident being closer to the front, especially near the end of the race, so that I can utilize the wattage that I have been blessed with and fortunate with and the wattage that I've, I've, I've uh, gained from training to utilize that wattage at the end of the race. And of course, all of that comes with fitness from doing longer rides, from doing harder rides, higher tempo rides, um, to help you build that endurance, to build that motor, that engine, as well as these legs so that you can be there when it matters the most, and that is at the end. So right now you see Peter Verth coming up, and he's in that DNA kit, that, uh, that mint green and black DNA kit right there about one o'clock, again, as I'm sitting behind uh, Austin Croyer, and uh, we're making our way. I believe right here in front of me is Elicio of Serious Cycling. And so, of course, anybody that comes in front of me who I'm drafting, I will try to call them out by name. Um, just because, you know, out of respect to the riders, you know, sometimes, you know, all we can do is call them out by kit because we're not able to catch the number to get the name. But as I do these commentations um, or commentated videos, as well as just being friendly at these races, uh, I'm, I'm meeting more people, I'm learning more people's names, and it's making for better commentated videos as well as it's making for amazing and fun events when we're actually out here racing. The guy to my right right there is Isaac Hernandez. Um, he's a very strong and verbal rider. So when, anytime you see Isaac in a race, just know you're going to hear him uh, give some, some, some good verbal information in the race, whether to keep pedaling or to close that gap or hold your line. Or He's a very vocal rider, which is awesome. So right here to my, um, my left, which is uh, Jose, which came underneath us. So now I'm sitting on Dylan's wheel and Dylan provided me a great draft. And this is why I understand he marked me because again, us being big boys, we have the big, the big boy squad. Um, he provided me a, a wonderful and amazing draft. So I was enjoying myself sitting behind him. I think I actually had a couple of a cup of coffee um, as well as a cheese Danish as I was sitting behind him and was able to recover a little bit. Um, as you see, my heart rate is elevated. It's in the 180s. But I think this elevated heart rate right here is strictly because of the heat. Um, and that's something that I've learned. We see we got some attacks going underneath. Max is trying to follow that attack underneath. Um, that the heat in these locations, which we're really close to some mountains, and it's just, man, it's baking out here. I've learned that this heat contributes to higher heart rates um, and yeah, having a higher heart rate makes the ride or the race harder for you and you have to be able to recover and you have to be hydrated so that, you know, everything keeps working fluidly and uh, efficiently. So right now, again, sitting behind Dylan and you see how the pace has kind of slowed down a little bit as we're going 24 miles an hour and this is downhill, but you see how the Peloton has swarmed us a little bit, pace has slowed down. And um, that's one thing I've learned too, especially being in these category four, category four or five races, is that um, there's going to be quick accelerations. It's gonna go hard for a minute and then it's gonna slow down. And so you really have to be able to make the moves with those surges and stay active in the race. So right now you see me coming up. I went around uh, Dylan because there was a gap there and I did not wanna miss any moves. So I've come up on Hosu's wheel. Uh, Hosu is a very strong rider with serious cycling as well. Um, I, I think in the Ontario Easter crit, Hosu actually won. Um, he went off the front. There was about, um, there was about, I would say about six serious cycling uh, racers in the race. And I believe he went off the front to finish strong with and for serious cycling. So right now, just making some move, carrying my momentum through the turns um, to stay with the group, not use, I mean, of course, I'm pushing out 312 watts, but that's not a lot in a turn, especially after my momentum um, carried me. You see me now hitting 400, 500 watts, now zero, and because, again, this is also an uphill section with a headwind. Um, so, of course, these uphill sections right before finishes are not my best friend, but as I've learned, they've separated the men from the boys as well as the women from the girls. Those uphill sections really uh, do a work on our legs. So right now you see we're going 28 miles an hour, and again, this is downhill. We're coming to the start finish as I sit on Hosu's wheel. I believe um, in my rear camera, that is one of the women who, was, um, who had uh, signed up to do the race. And uh, it's amazing. Some of these open races, we actually have women racing with us men. And I give them a hand, you know, for coming out 
and partaking in these men races um, because I know that there are some very, very strong and tact, uh, tactfully smart women out here racing, especially here in the SoCal area. So I really uh, I, I appreciate them and also I, I applaud them for coming out here racing with all these men um, because they can do it just like we can. And some of them probably can do it better than we can. So I give them their props. So right now I'm tucked in behind Factory Built. I couldn't get his name, um, but Factory Built. And I believe this is... Uh, Jose right here who I'm sitting behind and we are just making our way up to turn number three with Dylan on my wheel. Uh, again, we just kind of mark each other. I believe his family was, you know, noticed how he was sitting behind me and how I was sitting behind him. Um, we got Jorge back there right there with his uh, he's falling back with his, his kid open a little bit. And again, a lot of guys will unzip their their jerseys um, because again just to get some more wind on the body because it is such so hot out here in these races and again i believe this race ranged from 90 to 100 and 205 degrees the hottest race that i've done this year was a santa anita park crit which i will be back out there in august um it was 111 degrees in that second race uh and whoo uh, I'm happy that I finished that race, but I'm also thankful that I will not have to do that race again because I got third in the, the 30 plus 3-4 race. So that's the race that I'll be focusing on with the Santa Anita Park Criterium Racing coming that's uh, presented by Majestic Cycling. And again, this race particularly is the, or this event is the end of season event for Pacific Sunset Velo. And uh, I thank them for pre presenting us yet another opportunity to be able to race our bikes, to be able to see friends and, and meet, make new friends. Um, so I really appreciate Pacific Sunset Velo. Thank you for uh, this opportunity to race our bikes here in Ontario. Um, as you saw, the gentleman to my right with the, now he's in my rear view camera there, with the new breakaway gray and lime green or yellow uh, kit that is Irwin or Irvin, excuse me, and he is another person who I have identified as being a breakaway attempter. Like he and Peter Verth will, they will go off the front and try to do a breakaway. While they're off the front, they will grab a couple of preems, and I mean they're amazing because they're still able to finish races. I know if I try to go for a breakaway off the front, um, you may be seeing DNFs in my results because I'm not there yet. So. I give those guys applause as well, applause for even attempting to go up the road um, solo or even with one or two other people. So again, sitting behind Austin, um, I have Mike Starr to my, my right, I have Max to my left, and I'm just tucked in as we're going through turn number five with Dylan on my wheel with, I believe that's Josh back there uh, with the navy blue simple green kit on. And uh, you see the tempo is going up. We're going 29 miles an hour. Heart rate is at 175. Cadence was at 90. Now dropped down as I uh, let my as I coast a little bit to give the legs a quick little rest. Um, and as I've mentioned before, you know, of course, I like to spin and keep the legs moving. But I've also learned how beneficial it is for some moments at times just to allow your legs to not have to spin. Pretty much means coasting. And that takes away a little bit of that stress off the legs for that moment. If you can pedal through and uh, alleviate some stress on your legs, I've done that a little bit. Um, but again, there's a lot going on in your mind. If you can pedal and not have a lot of uh, force going on in your pedal stroke, that also will alleviate some of the stress in your legs. So right now you see the pace is up. We're going 30 miles an hour. Heart rate's at 180. And again, I'm tucked in on Austin's wheel. So Austin is getting a whole lot of love in this video and again um you know birds of a feather flock together you know he's marked me i've marked him and uh we keep it moving and so just trying to be around strong riders dependable riders um because of course you wouldn't want to jump on somebody's wheel that's going to sit up on you immediately you know he wants to finish well i want to finish well and so we mark you know those type of riders that want to do well in these rides some guys race just for fun um, i think we race for fun too but we also race for for good finishes for medals experience and cat up upgrade points so you know we're out here for the whole gambit of why people would race their bikes and so um it's amazing to be able to ride with other you know strong riders as well as people that are motivated 
to uh, finish well in these events. So right now you see there's a lull. We've slowed down. Dylan has come through. Mike Starr has come through. Um, some more guys have come through. We got Isaac up front and guys jumping on wheels. And that's one thing too is you try, try to stay away from the front. You see Dylan's up there now. He's soft pedaling as we come through. There's the family to the left over there. And uh, we're going through turn number one. So we've got, we're about halfway through now, I believe. And uh, yeah, we're 20 minutes in. We have roughly about eight minutes to go. So we're coming up on about four laps to go. Uh, or we're on four laps to go because, again, this video is just over 28 minutes long. And uh, we are about eight minutes left to go in this video. So, again, as you see, I'm sitting here close to the front. Heart rate is at 175, which is decent. Um, not totally in the recoveries number that I, that I you know, like. But at the same time, I'm in a good position. I'm close to the front. I can see what's going on up ahead of me. Um, the majority is behind me and uh all is well so right now tucked in i want to say that this is nick that i'm sitting behind not 100 percent sure couldn't really see his number but uh i believe this is nick so just tucked in behind nick taking the inside because the inside is the shortest line and just trying to stay present in this race you see Irvin up there uh, just to my two o'clock as he's falling back you see austin about my one o'clock and uh, you got Isaac up in front up there. He's probably a few wheels back. And you see some guys in the rear camera. Um, you know, they're just, everybody's just staying close, trying to pace line it out. We're about three or four wide. And uh, I know that as you cat up, you, the, the, the width of these Pelotons thin out. So you could say like the category five would be five wide. Category four, we go about four wide. Category three, two wide. And then from there on up, it just gets to a straight pace line. So you see here a guy's trying to go underneath and progress up, trying to do a breakaway. Nobody's reacting to that because we're coming close to the end. That little bit of effort that he made right there, people are not reacting to it because we're close to the end. We probably have about three laps to go now. And my family is here to the left. If you see a neon green shirt over there, that's my son. Just went through. We're going through the turn right now. And so people are not 100% reacting to that attempt because if you're exerting that much energy, Early on in the race, they know that you're not going to have that energy on the on the last lap. So <clears throat> everybody, I think, just kind of kept their tempo the same. You saw me. We went around Dylan just trying to stay. I'm just trying to stay fluid with what's going on in front of me, trying to stay on the wheel that's ahead of me so that I don't miss any moves. And uh, again, just trying to keep my head on the swivel, see what's happening, see what's going on. So you can kind of see how we're all pace lined out and uh, people are coming. You got Josh going on the outside, being followed by Irwin. I go on, or Irvin, I go on the inside to make up some spaces. I'm coming up, I'm coming up. I take the turn underneath because it was open. Again, maintaining my momentum. You see, I'm not even in 200 watts. I'm actually 160 watts. Heart rate is up a little bit. But you see here, um, you got Josh DeWitt on the outside. I went inside and I'm right here <clears throat> on, his, on his wheel. I think he was turning on his GoPro camera. And I'm noticing a lot of guys are racing with GoPro cameras. That's amazing because it gives me something to watch when I go to YouTube. If you guys upload them, hashtag upload your videos so I can watch them. But uh, but yeah, so this is amazing right here up here with Josh, with uh, Isaac, with um, Hosu and Elicio. We're up here with a lot of people. So we got guys coming on the outside and or the inside, excuse me, as we're coming through the start finish. And I believe we have about five minutes to go. So roughly three laps to go. Roughly three laps to go, ladies and gentlemen. And again, I thank you for your time. I know that time is very valuable. And again, if you're watching this video and you have not subscribed, I ask that you would hit that subscribe button. And I'm looking to share experience of life behind bars on two wheels. I'm looking to impact communities reshaping lives. And I ask that you would subscribe to join this journey with me, whether I'm doing group rides, whether I'm doing uh, racing, whether I'm training, um, doing unpackagings, unboxings, I ask that you would subscribe to be a part of this family with me. So right now, I believe I'm sitting on, I want to say that this is Ryan right here um, of the uh, UC San Diego kit. I believe this is Ryan Dunn. Uh, so I'm sitting on his wheel and again, just trying to stay present, see what's going on. We got guys moving up on the outside as we're coming up near the finish of this race and seeing what's going on. So we're coming through turn number three now into a headwind. You see here that it's 1% uh, 
Um, I'm not sure if this is going to go up to 2%, but we at least know that this area right here is 1%. And uh, we're coming to turn number four, then turn number five. You see Austin is to my immediate right. You see Isaac going up on the outside out there. And again, just making some moves. So I was rolling with Ryan. And what I've started to do, and I don't know if I should stop doing this or not. Let me, let me know down in the comment section below, ladies and gentlemen. I see guys making moves up. And I move up with them to a certain point, and then I kind of let off. So as you saw, Ryan just went up. You know, granted, I'm two wheels behind him now and pretty much passing him right now but when he made his move he was up closer to the front and I kind of let off of it and I tucked back in um that's safe for me but at the same time now I'm starting to know to get better finishes I need to be further up in the peloton so let me know down in the, in the comment section below if I should keep going all the way up to the front with them or if I should keep doing what I'm doing and then just fight you know move up you know progressively to be in a better position near the end um let me know down below because uh, i'm still trying to figure that out so we see there mike star is going on the outside i'm sitting behind steven and isaac we're coming up on louis of go fast and uh <clears throat> we're coming we're, we're almost there we're almost there so i want to say we have i want to say two laps to go actually this may be the last lap right here so we got max on my inside right here at about 10 o'clock and so I'm sitting behind Steven. I got Ryan to my right. I have uh, Isaac up there. I have Irvin up there. So I have some hitters. Josh is up there. I have some hitters in my in front of me. And so I know I'm in good position. I'm probably top 20 right now, which I know coming up on two laps to go, I need to be closer to the front. But again, I'm sitting on Max's wheel right here, which again, I've ridden with Max and raced with and against Max before. And so I know that that's a good wheel to be on right now. And he's behind Steven Walter, which, again, is a very strong rider. And so we're on the inside. We're getting past on the outside a little bit. But being on the inside is going to benefit us once the tempo picks up. Um, because, again, we're taking these shorter lines. So right now, I've probably dropped back to I'm probably in the mid-20s now. Because if you look at my rear camera, there's not too many people behind me. But more people are in front of me. But what you're going to see here now is I believe we're going to start to make a move up closer to the front of the peloton and so right now i believe we have one lap to go i believe this is the final lap and it's going to be a fun finish so right now i see dylan coming up on the outside he's a bigger body so i follow that move to just come up and get so i can give me another cup of coffee before we finish so i'm sitting behind dylan getting a good draft i have austin right here to my left I have isaac further excuse me um I have yeah Isaac further on my left. I have Stephen Walter going up on my left. Ryan's up there. Max is up there. So I'm kind of debating on which wheel I'm going to sit on. If I'm going to sit on Austin's wheel or sit on um, Dylan's wheel. I have uh, Josh, Jose come underneath me. And so now I'm coming up. So now you see Max is making his move. So I started to move up with Max. You see I'm passing riders. I'm passing riders past Ryan, passing Stephen, coming up behind Isaac. You still see Max is up front. He's still out the saddle. If I would have went with Max, I would literally be on his wheel right now. I would be on Max's wheel. You see there's a grand gap between Max and the Peloton. You can see Mike Starr is up front. We got uh, Peter Verth. We have some guys going up on the outside. I was debating if I was going to go with this wheel or not. He was still a little bit further away from me going on the outside. So I came inside. I'm sitting here now. I have the inside line. We're coming through turn number four, coming up on turn number five. Again, trying to stay inside. We got Mike Starr right there. I'm behind Peter Verth. I'm just a little bit far off of Peter Verth's wheel. We got Mike Starr sprinting, but it doesn't look like he's going anywhere. So I think he kind of sits up sitting behind Peter. Peter doesn't come out the saddle because he's not. He told me I'm not a sprinter. I'm sprinting, sprinting, sprinting. Going, Mac, uh, um, Austin passes me. I get seven or sixth place of 36 here at Ontario. End of season crit. Sixth place of 36, ladies and gentlemen. Awesome finish. Thank you guys for watching. Please comment, like, subscribe. On to the next one with your boy C Dub, aka Critwit. Peace.